Welcome back, everybody, to the 1987 Supermod. I'm your host, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Today, everybody, we are going into TV tapings. It is the first week of October, 1987, and we're getting ready to we're getting set to record two episodes of All Star Wrestling and two episodes of Championship Wrestling. As always, we will split the show up into two parts, so you are here for part one. Now, the way we always book television is we book our main events first, and then we fill in. And as I've gone over before, as far as the wrestlers we use, the wrestlers in gold right now are the ones that are on television or are... As far as the women go, the women aren't on television every week, so they're they're uh, yellow in their numbers keeps accumulating over time, whereas the men pretty much rotates every other week. So, for example, Sonny Rogers is not on TV for this recording. He'll be on TV for the next recording. Same thing with Mike, Mike Graham, same thing with the Midnight Express. That's how it works. So the wrestlers all in yellow are the ones that are currently male wrestlers that are in yellow are the ones that are on TV for this batch of TV recordings. So our big main events for the four cards is going to be Duncan and Slater versus Snooka and Slaughter. We're going to have Jerry Blackwell versus Nick Bockwinkle for the World Heavyweight title. The Nasty Boys are going to face Hennig and Hall. And the Iron Sheik is going to face Bob Backlund. So we have some really big main events here, followed by the typical card which is made up of enhancement talent matches. Remember, this is 1987. This is not episodic television for wrestling. This is local market syndicated television, or in the case of championship wrestling, it's on ESPN. We are trying to get fans to buy tickets to their local show. So therefore, we're going to shine up and make our wrestlers and tag teams look as good as possible. So let's go ahead and get rolling here my friends, and we are on the TV taping day, but we're not in the window. We're going to go ahead and forward and get in. And look, a nice picture of Brian Adias. I like Brian Adias. I thought he was a good wrestler. So we have been recording out of the Minneapolis Auditorium in the Midwest region, and we're going to do that again. Obviously, I did not preset this, but the AI went ahead and selected it, and that's what we're going to stick with. It's going to work out well for us. So let's check out our backstage incidents. And it is all protege stuff with Nick Bockwinkle. So yay, yay, and yay. All right, let's see who's absent, because this always plays a factor. And of course, there's a lot of people absent. So Mitch Snow's out, Mr. Saito's out, uh, Kanichki's out. Ah, it's a lot of people out for this TV reco- uh, taping. So we're just going to wing it as we get going here. I'm pretty disappointed. See, like the first example, the first match we're going to have here was going to be Mitch Snow. So, of course, we're booking championship wrestling first. We never know which one is going to get recorded first. So we will, ah, oh, that got ugly. We'll make adjustments for Mitch Snow. Mitch Snow, that's disappointing. So we're going to open up with a women's match, which is going to be Susan Starr versus Wendy Richter. Wendy Richter, of course, is the former world women's t- champion, and uh, she lost the title back to Sherry Martell in a very controversial finish where the title was lost by countout. And I still can't explain how or why that happened, but we are going to make an angle of it since she's in an angle with Sherry Martell, and we're going to get Stanley Back Blackburn involved here, the president of the AWA, and he's going to address this on All-Star Wrestling. So, of course, it's an enhancement match. Wendy Richter goes over. Easy peasy. Next, we got Mike Luca and Al Ringo taking on the Guerrero brothers. And this one... We were going to make a six-man match, so we need to get a third opponent in there because we wanted to get Eddie on there also. Yeah, that was the original plan. So we got our list of enhancement enhancement wrestlers here. Let's throw Mark Young in there with them. 
He's another lightweight. So we've got Luca, Ringo, and Young. Versus the Guerrero brothers. All three of them. This match ends up having to go five minutes, I think. But we'll see. We'll see what it, uh, what it comes down to. Who was the third guy here? I have a really hard time remembering this stuff. Mike Luca. There he is. So Luca, Ringo, and Young. And they are going to face all three of the Guerrero brothers. I don't think we've had Eddie wrestle with his brothers yet, so this is kind of cool. And actually, we're going to give Eddie the win. It'll help him get a rub, help him get over. Yeah, so it's got to be five minutes minimum. Okay, there we go. So the Guerrero brothers are in there. Zarna versus Oliver. Oliver has been taking a lot of losses to Jerry the King Lawler, so he needs to get some wins on TV. And like I've said before, I've always thought Rip Oliver was a solid wrestler. I can see why Vern Gagne brought him into the AWA. He was looking for guys that could wrestle that were steady hands. All right, Mikey Jones is going to square off against DJ Peterson. And, of course, the downfall of having that six-man match is that we're going to have to cut back some of our promos or a match in order to make up those extra two minutes. And that's fine. Uh, the occasional six-man on, on TV is a good uh, good thing to have. It's especially good with the, with the Guerrero brothers. They're, they're as good as it, as it comes. All right, David Price is going to battle Colonel De Beers. And you'll notice, folks, if you pay attention, that I stick to it with um, using lightweights, smaller wrestlers, against heels. I want the heels to look big, bad, intimidating, and I want my baby faces to look like they're overcoming a larger wrestler. So Teen Wolf, David Price, a.k.a. Wolfman Jr., is going to take on Colonel De Beers, and of course Colonel De Beers is going to wipe the mat with him. Jerry Lawler is going to cut a promo. Now, if you look at the promos here, we know we're going to lose time, right? So we can probably drop two minutes in the main event, and it won't hurt us. So we're going to give Jerry Lawler a five-minute promo because uh, the guy is excellent. This should net us a high score as always. And then, uh, just like we said last episode... As soon as this is over, we're going to have to work out another loan agreement to get Jerry Lawler back for another uh, 10 loan dates. All right, Tom Benninghouse is going to do the favor for Lawler. Tom Benninghouse, when he uh, matured, Turned out to be a pretty decent wrestler. Um, I liked him in WCW as just a part of uh, disorderly conduct with uh, Mike Moran. It was Tough Tom and Mean Mike, and they were good. All right, Lawler gets the win. Going to do a promo with the Russians. This is going to be just a three-minute promo. I don't think we've done a promo with them yet, so we'll see how this one goes. So, of course, they're managed by Sheik Adnan LKC, who is a native of Iraq, in case you didn't know. And he was actually a classmate of Saddam Hussein's at the university, allegedly. But he did have some ties to Hussein because LKC actually ran a show there 
in I think the uh, very late 70s or early 80s, he actually promoted a uh, wrestling show in Iraq, in Baghdad, I think, and brought a group of American wrestlers over there. If if I remember the story correctly, I listened to a really good podcast with him some years back. I think LKC is in his uh, early 80s now at this point. He's still physically in good shape. And um, it was a really interesting, really interesting uh, interview, uh, podcast to listen to. LKC had a, had a very fascinating life. Of course, late in his career, he ended up in the WWF as one of the uh, managers of S- uh, Sergeant Slaughter during the Gulf War. Of course, they made uh, the Iron Sheik the other manager, which was kind of ridiculous based on the fact that the Iron Sheik is Iranian. He's not Arab. Iranians are not Arab. They're Persians. So Persians and Arabs have like a feud. So obviously Iraq and Iran were at war for seven years. So you have an Iranian and an Iraqi managing an American. It was the weirdest thing on earth. But And then everybody knew who Iron Sheik was, and they still changed his name to like Colonel Mustafa or whatever they changed his name to. I, I It was a very strange thing, but at the time it worked. It was a hot feud. All right, so Ben Patrick and Julio Rodriguez here are going to get their asses kicked by the Russians. Those sideburns, man. What a look. What a look. We're going to give Soldat Ustinov the win. It's been a while. He's got that running clothesline he does that's pretty good. And then we're going to have Bachwinkle and Zabisco cut a promo. We're going to shave one minute off their promo. It shouldn't hurt us too bad. This this should be outstanding. Their feud is just so hot right now with Hall and Hedig. It's It's awesome. This has been so much fun booking these uh these shows because this feud has gotten so hot. I've been playing TEW for what, like five years now? I don't think I have ever had a feud this hot. There's Scott Hall. Obviously they're not gonna talk. They're not even gonna be on screen, but that's who they're cutting the promo about. So we're gonna use both of them on microphone and we'll see how it goes. Now the main event here is Jerry Blackwell versus Nick Bockwinkle. That's kind of a tongue twister, isn't it? Blackwell versus Bockwinkle. <laughs> so it'll be a 13-minute bout. And of course, Nick Bockwinkle's going to go over. Um, sticking with tradition, he can't go over clean. So we're going to have Larry Zabisco interfere. So there we are. We're one minute over. So we're going to drop that main event down one more minute. It should not hurt anything. And here we go, championship wrestling. And again, uh, as I've pointed out before, I always treat championship wrestling as like my premiere show. I treat All-Star Wrestling as a little bit lesser than of a show just because All-Star Wrestling is on, you know, syndication in individual uh, markets, whereas Championship Wrestling is nationally broadcast and actually internationally broadcast too. So let's go ahead and get rolling here, folks. This is a nice score for a three-minute squash match, a 50. Wendy Richter is over. All right, the Guerreros get a 43 overall. Eddie gets the win. Nice. Rip Oliver gets the win with a pile driver, 44. Peterson, we're still working on him with popularity, so he gets a 33 in an enhancement match. Nice score for the Colonel here, Colonel De Beers. Teen Wolf takes another loss. He doesn't mind. He's still getting paid. 
All right, nice promo here by Jerry Lawler, 83. I'll take it. Well done. All right, 70. Jerry Lawler scores a 93. Wow. And apparently he has great, great chemistry with Tom Buddinghouse. Cool. Nice match. Wow, this one was rough. Definitely rough. We're going to have to keep them off of talking on TV for a while, maybe. Or we figure out another way to score them. But uh, that doesn't help us any. <laughs> Ooh, and only a 48. Eesh. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're, we got to build these guys up. We got to build our own stars. So it, it's going to take a little while. Nice. Nice, nice promo here. 86 overall. Very well. Very well done. All right, let's see what our main event does here. Only an 81. Jerry Blackwell scored low. I wonder why. Jerry Blackwell was over in Minnesota. Well, he's got some things going against him, so that's probably why. But 81 is still not terrible. With those high promos, we should do all right here. Let's, let's see what we got. All right, so we increased in every single region except for one. So I'd say that 76 overall did just fine. Okay, now we're going over and we're going to book All-Star Wrestling. So let's change our highlight here because otherwise I'll forget and I'll start booking the wrong thing as usual. <laughs> All right, we're locked in there now. So we know Mitch Snow isn't here, which is disappointing. So we have to put somebody over, else over, in favor of Mitch Snow. So let's have Sonny Rogers go over Tom Renesto. And again, I don't know if this Tom Renesto Jr. is actually assassin number two, Tom Renesto's son. I tried looking it up, but I couldn't find anything. If any of you know, drop a comment below and uh, share it with us. If this is actually indeed his son, let us know. So here we go. Sonny Rogers gets a nice win, a TV win. He's doing a lot of lo losing on the touring circuit against uh, the champion, which is Nelson Royal. So this is this is good for him to get the win. So next we're going to have Baxter and Pullins versus the Texas Hangmen, who don't forget are now managed by Don Carson, and they clicked. This was a, uh, a really good decision. Carson is definitely helping out the hangman. So Sean Baxter, Keith Pullins, that hair, man. Look at that hair. Every time I see it, I got a comment on it. And the guy was skinny as a rail, too. There's Keith Pullins. There's the Texas Hangers. That's right. I just called the Texas Hangmen the Texas Hangers, and I may do it more often. <laughs> they had a good look. Two big dudes. Those masks were cool looking. Real cool masks. Psycho's going to get the win, and we're even going to get Don Carson involved here. No, it's a squash match. He doesn't need to. Okay. Got that one booked up now. There's the legend, Bun Boy Barton. He's going to get the shit kicked out of him. By Buddy Wolf. And actually, Buddy Wolf was a professional and was probably light as a feather. And probably a really nice guy, despite his absolutely horrible facial hair that drives me nuts. <laughs> All right, Buddy Wolf gets the win. Mad Mountain Mike is going to battle Alan West. And there's old Mad Mountain. And I figured out why he calls himself Mad Mountain Mike, because there is actually a Man Mountain Mike. So if you get the chance, look this guy up on YouTube. He was a big dude. A really big dude. But Alan West is going to take him for the fall here. Alan West has got a great mustache. All right, Greenlee versus Cactus Jack. We get to comment on Chuck Greenlee's hair again. Great mustache, though. 
I'm a big fan of the mustache, and I think we're way overdue for it to come back. And I'm holding out, hoping that it'll come back. I mean, that's a great looking mustache. He's obviously losing his hair. He grew the front really long to slick back, but it's a great mustache. And I think that luck that look needs to come back. The the beard has gone run its course here. I think it's time for the mustache to come back. So Cactus Jack gets the win. And here we go, the big announcement from Stanley Blackburn. And he is going to make the announcement with old Larry uh I'm trying to blink here. Larry Nelson. Man, that was foolish of me. All right, President Blackburn. Now, are you ready for this? This is a big announcement here concerning the women's title, but it's something I've decided to do. Stanley, President Blackburn has officially held up the women's world women's title. Big announcement, folks. Real big announcement. So there we go. Microphone. And what do we do, Mr. Blackburn, on? I'm not certain. Let's give him microphone. Let's see what his ratings are if we can. It's a pretty horrible picture of him, isn't it? Now, this really helps us. Zero to 45 and everything. We can really get... You know what? Let's not even take the risk. Let's not even rate him. And we'll let Larry Nelson carry the load here. But it's a big announcement. And because it was announced, or it's going to be announced right now, we are going to vacate the title. Bam. There it is. The title is held up. Still don't understand why that happened in the first place, but it did. So it's cool. We're just going to run an angle with it. The great Houdini here, man, what a what a talent this guy was. He's going to take on Doug Summers. Doug Summers doing some singles work here. We're going to see Buddy Rose doing some singles work also. There we go. Doug Summers is going to get the convincing win. I almost forgot to click it there. Houdini could have gone over. I doubt it, but it's possible. All right, Wahoo McDaniel and Baron Von Ratzke are going to cut a promo here. They got a five-minute promo. And, of course, they're going to cut it on Bobby Duncan and Dick Slater. Bobby Duncan was a good signing. He's working out really well. And if we do make a title change to a babyface, he's a good guy to help feed that babyface champion. Dick Slater, too. So off screen for both of them. And microphone. Let's go with Overness for Wahoo this time. And let's go with microphone for Baron. Let's see if it if it does anything. I'm a gambler. I'm taking a gamble. <laughs> All right, Nacho Barrera, who is actually a fan of this show. Believe it or not, he uh, he watches these. He's linked up through a group I belong to on Facebook for the AWA and WWA, and he always likes every one of these show postings. So the real Nacho Barrera is a fan. And if you're listening, Mr. Barrera, it's a pleasure to have you listening. I always enjoyed your enhancement work in the ring, and uh, we're glad to relive those memories again. So here he is, Barrera versus McDaniel, and as much as I like him, Nacho's going down. Here comes a big tomahawk chop, and I'm sure Wahoo wasn't light and easy in these matches. 
All right, it's Nick Bockwinkle promo time, a straight-up promo from Nick Bockwinkle on Kurt Hennig. I'd imagine Nick Bockwinkle would be wearing a suit and looking like a million dollars in this promo. So of course, Hennig's going to be off-screen. And here we go, our big main event, Duncan and Slater versus Slaughter and Snooker. This one goes 14. We switch it over to tag team view. And of course, this is a big match. We have to do a double count out, the typical AWA screw job to keep all these people hot, but to still give a major marquee uh, name presentation for the TV show for viewers. So we're going to have this as a double count out, which is pretty much the way Vern would have booked it. And I'm fine with it too. It's not going to hurt anybody. Remember, this is not episodic television. This is us trying to sell tickets to the towns that we're touring. So I'm perfectly fine with a double count out finish. It helps, helps everybody and doesn't hurt anybody. So let's book it out. We are, at, we are maxed out here at 65 minutes. Let's go ahead and run with it. All right, Sonny Rogers gets the win, of course. And again, somebody find out if that's really the real Tom Ernesto Jr. Oh, no. Psycho got hurt. What the heck? This match only gets a 13. Not good. Not good. Let's see if his injury played a factor. Probably did. Yep. Yep. And despite our best efforts, the hangmen just are not over yet. We're just going to have to keep working them and, and keep giving it a shot. So hopefully that's just a little sprain for Psycho and we'll get him back soon. Buddy Wolf gets the win with that wicked reverse, reverse neck breaker. And he probably showed his awful facial hair and scared Bun Boy Barton. That is the worst name of all time. But I do think if you see anybody out there with a man bun these days, you should immediately name him Bun Boy Barton. Because that's what I'm going to do from here on out. Every man bun I see automatically... Bun Boy Barton. <laughs> All right. Alan West gets the win. And, of course, he and Mad Mountain Mike don't click. And we only get a 22. We've got an awful score average going so far for this show. So let's hope some of these things pick it up. And it doesn't. It continues being awful. Here we go. Cactus Jack gets the win. Oh, let's, let's keep moving on here. All right. Oh. And another awful score here of a 38. But Stanley Blackburn, President Blackburn, sends out the message. The world women's title has been held up. And what President Blackburn always said, also said is that in an upcoming show, Sherry Martell and Wendy Richter are going to have to face, face off again for the vacant title. And it's going to happen very soon. Most likely the next time they wrestle. Most likely on Saturday in Minneapolis. That's when they're going to face off for the title. And who knows who's going to win it. All right. Doug Summers beats Houdini. We finally get a decent score here for TV matches. Man, Houdini had a look there, didn't he? I think that was a mustache too, but not a very good one. But check out that hair. Like he's got the feathered thing going on. Man, what a look. Again, I don't know how that guy wasn't selling out arenas. All right, nice little promo here for McDaniel and Von Rotschke. Gets a lower score than what I hoped for. This also gets a little bit lower of a score than what I hoped for. But uh, Nacho did his job. Wahoo won with that tomahawk chop. Nice. This is what we needed. Got an 82. Now that's an 82 and we still lost heat. So that's how hot that feud is, everybody. 
So let's see what our main event doors does for us. I certainly hope it's in the 80s to save us. 83. Nice. Excellent. We got a double count out here. This is good news for us. All four of these men stay strong, but we still got a good match for TV. And Bobby Duncombe's getting a hit for inconsistency. If anybody knows what that means or what can be done about it, let me know. Um, because I, I, like I said, I've been playing this game for a while and I don't know what can be done about it. So let's go ahead and finish up here, folks. We max out and we, uh, I'm sorry, we increase our popularity in 12 regions, which is good, which I believe is all we broadcast to is 12 regions. So that's terrific. Okay, everybody. We, that's the end for part one here. We'll come back for part two tomorrow. And go ahead and record these shows. We'll give you a little preview here of what we're going to do if you hadn't didn't see already. But we have um, should start off with championship wrestling again. I think I just said it's going to. So the main event of this this one is going to be Iron Sheik versus Bob Backlund. We did talk about this already, but then we're going to have the Nasty Boys versus Hennigan Hall on All Star Wrestling. So we got some pretty good matches lining up here, and. Um, this one should also turn out to be a pretty good television taping. So thanks again for t uh, tuning in, everybody, and watching us live and in living color here. And if you haven't done so already, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and help us out. Share this video. Tell your friends. Tell your friends' friends, and tell them to tell their friends to watch our channel and help us keep growing, and we have been growing. I really enjoy the feedback. I enjoy chatting with everybody. It's just a great time reliving these old memories of these uh, these awesome wrestlers in a, in a great time in wrestling. So if you haven't already, also go to facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod or facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod. Go ahead and join us in conversation about the supermod. Let us know how your mods are going and we can just continue to have fun and talk about it. Also, if you would like the mod, feel free to contact me at braddrake.net slash contact. Go to that website. Go ahead and shoot me a line. I'll be more than happy to send you a link to the Google Drive. All right, folks, that's it for now, and so long for now.